Go ahead. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're joining us out there on Facebook as well. You are watching Creative Conversations. This is a show created uh, by Naha for the Professional Beauty Association. The show has been designed for all of us Naha geeks who absolutely love everything about it and who can't wait to meet the artists who have made this happen. Um, we have had Vernon Francois who kicked it off. You know, he does Lupita and Zendaya and Serena, all of those celebrities who only know, need one name. Um, we've had Fatima as well for our inspiring salon of the year category. So good luck to Fatima and everybody who's nominated. Just last week we had Evie who, oh my God, what an inspiring woman and what an incredible team. Literally with Evie, it's a, it's a family affair. And we think that is just so super cool. And our guest today is um, no exception to all the fun and incredible guests we've been having. Keep in mind that everything we discuss, if there's a resource like a photographer or an image that they provide us, we'll go ahead and put that at the Pro Beauty Association um, website. So that's probeauty.org forward slash Naha. Type it in, you can see previous interviews and you can also check out um, all the information that we can give you from these interviews. So we're super happy about that. And before I get too carried away, we have Joey Posner. Um, he is our student hairstylist of the year nominee on April 7th. So make sure you get that on your calendar, especially those of you who are really excited about that category. And then um, I'm super excited that on April 14th, we will have Silas saying, you know him because he's, I mean, get scared when he's nominated because he wins a lot. His work is like high art. The creativity is sensational and I can't wait for that interview. Again, that's on April 14th. All of our interviews between now and Cosmoprof where we will have Naha live are nominees. So make sure you check them out. Speaking of Cosmoprof, Cosmoprof will be August 29th in Vegas live. I don't mean virtual, I mean live. What do I mean live? I mean there, your body. Be there, buy a ticket. Tickets go on sale this spring. I've got my flowers out. Spring is here. What are we on, like our fourth day of spring? So I'm so excited about that. So make sure you go check that out. Tickets will be on sale. You know, you know Pro Beauty, they're gonna be showing you on Facebook and Instagram and on the website. So look for that coming your way soon. <sighs> and now let's get into our incredible guest today. This guest is special because he is actually licensed in barbering and cosmetology, a native of Chicago. Are you watching out there, Jamie? Uh, Tammy's watching. Are you in Chicago, Tammy? Um, this artist has been recognized in several magazines as well as a recipient of the Most Artistic Award from the Cosmetologists of Chicago, both in 2006 and 2007. We know how hard it is to win one award to get two back to back is pretty cool. Fluent in both English and Spanish, this artist has a skillful approach, yet modern and original to everything he does. He gives you a really uncomplicated, I watched some of his YouTubes, you have to check them out, approach to understanding how to use your clippers. I didn't know I had to position it that way. Learning, learning, learning. When you stop learning, you start li stop living, right? He is recognized um, throughout Chicago for his graphic designs. They're also known as like the hair tattoos. Um, so he can do some incredible designs, which is how he got nominated there uh, this year. A Naha nominee last year in 2020 and a nominee in 2021. Please help me welcome to the show, Nieves Almarez. Hopefully I didn't mess up your name again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that sounded perfect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. And again, congratulations on your collection. Perhaps a toast. I've got my uh, Heineken zero alcohol beer here because I'm drying up for the month of March. I'm sure we could all use that. You've got a little something as well. <laughs> I have a, a piña michelada. <laughs> piña michelada, which I had to Google, and I know that's Clamato juice in my beer. So cheers and congratulations. <laughs> cheers. 
That actually tastes really good. And I hear this is your wife's favorite drink. That's true. That's that's uh, what you're drinking is my wife's favorite drink there. <laughs> <laughs> She's got good taste. All right, sir. So I'm, I like to start with this question because I think as artists, we all have such very different journeys. And so I would like to start at the beginning and find out how did you get started in hair? Uh, well, it's a long story, but I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Um, I, <laughs> it's your show. I basically, I was going to I was going to a barber shop many years ago, and I fell in love with the atmosphere um, and the ambiance of the barber shop. And I developed a relationship with the barber that was cutting my hair, and I just simply asked him, you know, what was he making doing this? And he told me, and it was like double the amount. I was making at the time. Oh, so wow. I said, wow, I would love to, I'd love to get into this. So he encouraged me. I actually bought a set of clippers um, out of the barber shop. There was a gentleman sweeping in there and he just kind of sold tools on the side. Um, so I, I buy the tools and I'm about two weeks in and I felt like I was the best barber on the planet, you know? Uh, <laughs> But um, one thing I, I didn't know how to do was use scissors. So that, that kind of forced me to um, start looking around into schools and seeing where I could figure out how they were going to teach me how to use scissors. So I end up opening up the yellow book. Okay, at the time, I, there was no Google there, you know, it, it wasn't <laughs> yellow <something> pages. <laughs> I open up the yellow pages and I end up um, looking around and I find a school in my area and they said that they offered um, financial aid, you know, because I had called several schools and it, it seemed really pricey to me just to learn how to use scissors, you know, <laughs> and um, I called this one school. They said, hey, you, you can start with $100 down. I said, wow, that's my school. It's right down the street from me. So um I go to sign up and the school's not open that day. So it's empty. You know, the lights were off. I walked to the admission administration office and I sign up and they said, you start the following week. So the following week, I walk through the front door and there's a garbage bag waiting for me, a hefty garbage bag waiting for me when I walk through the front door. And guess what was in there? I hope not trash. My roller sets, my roller sets, my manicure kit, uh, my mannequin head, everything that I needed to start my journey in my uh, scissor cutting, <laughs> I suppose, was there. So the thing about the school was they were anticipating you not to finish your first 250 hours. So they started you off with a garbage bag. Um, in that was your kit in there. <laughs> so uh, after you finished your first 250 hours, they would give you the gym bag with the school logo on it. Oh. So that was the reasoning behind them just starting you off that way. So they set me up in the back and I said, okay, I'm ready. When do we start the scissor cutting? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, you mean shear cutting? And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I guess so. They said, well, you need to learn how to palm the shears, hold the comb, hold your spray bottle all at the same time. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. And uh, I start looking around, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think I signed up for beauty school. You know, <laughs> no one ever told, no one ever told me there was a, a license involved in cutting hair. There was, um, a cosmetology program, a barber program. I was just like misinformed, okay. you know, but I signed up and it was the cosmetology program. I figured, hey, I'm here. I might as well go through with it. And I went through the cosmetology program. And as I was finishing that up, um, the owner of the school says, hey, uh, you want to go through in our instructor program. I, I guess they seen I was, you know, ambitious and, you know, I, I really was enjoying what I was doing. Yeah. And I guess 
my main concern was, well, what's it going to cost me? And they said, well, your, your grant is, uh, you know, it, it'll take care of everything. So I said, sign me up. <laughs> so yeah. I literally went through, I went through the Cosmo program and uh, the Cosmo instructor program. At the time, I, I paid 300 bucks out of pocket uh, okay. for this. So, um, you know, uh, as I was finishing up Cosmo school, I did end up opening up a barber shop and I went and got this barber tattoo <laughs> and um, official. <laughs> I hire. <laughs> so I, I hire a barber down the line and his license actually said barber on it. And he says, hey, did, do you know with your um, Cosmo license, you're not supposed to use the straight edge razor? I said, really? I didn't know that, you know. Uh, but I own a barber shop. I have a barber tattoo. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm not officially a barber, you know. Uh, <laughs> so that that made me go back to barber school. And then I followed up with the barber instructor program as well. So I did 4,500 hours in the great state of Illinois. Um, and I, I completed all of those programs. Um, and I, I'm glad I did along the way in the, in the journey um, of doing all of that. It kind of like opened my eyes to both sides of the industry. So um, I always feel like, you know, me not being informed and me just kind of like falling into these uh career paths it, it it definitely helped me along the way so how are your uh how are your perm wraps <laughs> <laughs> perfect <Okay. laughs> hey it's coming back i see a lot of people i see like fern the barber and people are they're perming mannequins now it seems to be like a a thing that's happening in guys hair so <laughs> or short hair i i I actually just received perm rods um, in the mail today, um, and and that's um, with some curriculum I'm developing. So yeah, definitely that's you know something that's probably coming back. <laughs> okay, I can't wait to see what you create, especially from your creations. Since you became a teacher, what's your favorite memory about teaching? Um. Just kind of working with the students, inspiring. I think that um, as I started to, to go along in my journey, um, for some strange reason, uh, in my Cosmo school, everyone thought I knew how to use the clippers so well. So they would come and surround me while I was doing a clipper cut. So that kind of forced me to figure out ways I can interpret what I was doing over to the students. Yeah. Um, and that laid a foundation out really to the techniques that I teach to this day. So um, that was one of the more notable things I could actually like remember um, from like actually teaching in school. Yeah. So tell me this, I, 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 of course, I, I Google everybody and I've read all about you. You founded this organization called How to Fade Hair, which I think is a great name because I can't tell you how many people I've been to to cut my hair and it's clear they don't know how to fade, right? Like this is three weeks old, I'm gonna fade, right? And you know when they're not, when I'm, when I don't feel bald, right? like I know what bald feels <laughs> like. So if I can grab it, I'm not faded, right? It's like, so tell me about this organization. We'll get into your techniques later, but tell everybody what, what How to Fade Hair is. So How to Fade Hair is me going to um, the beauty shows when I was a student in cosmetology. And what I would do was I would, I would take students and I would put designs in their hair and cut their hair. And we'd walk around the hair show together. And I noticed that people would stop us. Oh, wow, that's amazing. How'd you do it? Can I take a picture? And I wish I knew how to do that, they would all say. And that kind of like a light bulb went off in my head. And yeah. I said, I said, you know what? I'm going to make an instructional video. 
Right. And I was cutting, I was cutting up one of my clients at the time. And uh, he was like a, a big time DJ for many years in, in the Chicagoland area. Oh, very and cool. I told, I told him, I said, I'm going to make an instructional video. And he goes, oh, you're going to do a how to. And right there, the name clicked in my head. How to ah. fade hair. <laughs> so you so got the name. So I, yeah, that's where I got the name. So I ran with it. I made an instructional video. And um, one thing I also did was I made it in English and Spanish. And I would rent out a small booth in these big um, trade shows like ISSE. And I would uh, sell my DVD out of there. And um, yeah. what I did was, and what I, what I didn't know at the time was I was actually developing techniques and I was naming the techniques in the DVDs, in the videos that um, I was, I'm actually still using to this day. Yeah. So um, one thing that uh, also kind of helped me out along my journey in cosmetology was, um, in fact, how to fade hair, I've made it more official and I made it into um, an official continued education sponsor in Illinois. So we provide continued education hours to renew your license okay. um, in various states. I do it in various states now around the U.S. So most states that require continued education, I provide those hours for that as well. And, okay. you know, the brand just kind of took off. Um, I created a YouTube channel and I would put like these two minute trailers of my videos up on the channel. Yeah. And, you know, it was only it was only two minutes long. But at the time, there wasn't a lot of saturation on YouTube with barbering or um, right. haircut tutorials. And like my videos were getting millions of hits. And um, so cool. to this day, I think my my page has like seven million views um, on my videos. So wow. um, that kind of that kind of motivated me and kept me going. Um, so I, I just adopted the how to fade hair name. Um, I it, not so much um, as a brand, but myself, I became like the face of it. And, you know, it just kind of grew and exploded. <laughs> I love it. Well, we'll get the link to your YouTube channel into chat for sure. Um, so um, Tammy says hi. Tammy's from Arizona. Rachel Lopez from Wyoming. And um, hello from Nando Ramos. Um, so lots of people are sending their love. I want to get into some Naha now. I want to get into some collection talk. And what I like to do here, Nieves, is, is, is really try to you know, creative conversations. We have people watching who who compete um, every year, um, and some who win, some who get nominated. We have some people who are just dreaming of competing and thinking it's out of reach. So we'll try and get into the details here of each of your nominated collections. So let's first start with congratulations on your 2021 nomination. Um, and let's talk about what was your inspiration before you get into the technique or the photos, what was the inspiration of this collection? Uh, so, I mean, I always um, find inspiration with my city. So um, I al always feel like Chicago does designs a certain way. And, you know, last year I competed as well and I, I was a finalist and I also stuck to um, doing designs uh, a certain way, my, my hometown way. Yeah. And, you know, um, this year I felt like, well, maybe I should go a different route. And the day of was actually me telling myself, no, stick to your roots. You yeah. have, you, you know, you had what it took last year and you know um you got nominated stick to what you do best and that's right. me sticking to what i do best yeah i mean it's 
It's beautiful. The, the photography is great. Let's talk about your photographer. So uh, Joseph Castleberry is, uh, is the photographer for this. Mm -hmm. And the guy, um, we've used him in the past, uh, you know, for, for different pictures and photos. And actually, he, he's taken photos of me, myself, and he makes me look so cool. So um, when, when we were keeping in mind um, who were we going to use uh, for Naha this year, you know, I kind of knew we're going to use Joseph. He's really creative and he's like super meticulous um, lighting and, and everything. And also just kind of going back from last year, showing him that collection and showing him everyone else's he kind of was giving me feedback um, as to, okay, I got an idea of what, what they may be looking for, the judges. And um, we kind of went off of that. So we were trying to strategize a little bit. There. Yeah, I like that. Let's talk about the first image. Let's talk about what, what you were creating here. So um, right here, I wanted to show shape. And actually, if I if I kind of go into the collection, um, the first two guys on the right, those were models that I really wanted to use from the beginning. And the the last model, which is the first model there, um, he's actually a friend of the family, and he was kind of like a fill in. So wow. I was having a hard time finding that third model. Um, and uh, the week of the shoot is when I, I reached out to him and I found him. And, you know, one thing that I really want to like point out on this model is the you see the shape of the head, how, how in the back it kind of goes up into that point. Yeah. You know, the texture of his of his hair, it just is, does not lay like that. You know, I had to kind of like blow dry and you know, um, use product to get it to, to stand up and to yeah. lay the way it does. And I just like really want to make sure everyone like realizes that, you know, and when, when I think in my head, um, what is Naha judging, I'm like hoping that they see that, you know, because that right there was, it was complex, you know, it's well, not an easy thing to do. Well, what we do look for is is photo manipulation because to get a a point like that is it takes incredible skill, or it takes the wave of a wand of a photographer, and so we really go through raw files to make sure that it's not all magic of a photographer. Uh -huh. So you really cut that yeah. price to people who want to get mm -hmm. that kind of sharp geometry into a shape. Yeah. Yeah, you know it would have been cool if we did show the raw the raw pictures <laughs> because they look they look almost identical right. um, to what we're looking at right now. Absolutely. So um and then another thing, you know, when you're when you're working on a Naha shoot and you're doing these things, um, it takes time and you're trying to be perfect. So time's rolling, you got you're in a studio sometimes, you got photographers. In my case, I was there the the day was going, we were probably there from like 10 a.m., 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., almost midnight. And yeah. um, I'm, I'm working on this collection. And honestly, the guy on the left with that shape, um, right before I started his haircut, um, somebody else gave me some input. And they were like, you should do something similar to what you did last year when you got nominated so on the other side of his head i started to do that and i didn't like the way it was coming out so i went back to the other side and i perfected that side and that's the side we shot good thing he's family right you said he's a friend or family <laughs> yeah <laughs> never actually <laughs> never mind <laughs> Like, but um, <laughs> I uh, I did kind of you know fix his hair up afterward and everything. He was completely content. <laughs> yeah. 
So you do a lot of design on the beard as well. Is it any advice on that for the approach to a beard from anything on the actual hair or hairline? Um, yeah, you want to start off leaving leaving the, the length of the facial hair or even when you're doing designs in general, start off a little longer because if you cut it down too short, um, sometimes beards could be patchy and you can have a lot of breaks in your design work if okay. that happens. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to have to be filling it all in with eyeshadow or something. <laughs> Okay, so now you've mentioned it a True. couple times. Let's talk about 2020. Now I'm curious which one inspired you. But let's talk about your inspiration here. Congratulations <laughs> on the nomination last year. Um, talk to me about this collection. So let's let's talk about the inspiration. <laughs> so let let me tell you. I was I was called by um by the director of education for uh, Wall Clipper, uh, Lisa Fanuke, called me on the phone and said, hey, um, next weekend, we're gonna do a creative shoot. She didn't tell me it was for Naha. She didn't tell me um, we were entering Naha. She just said we were doing a creative shoot. So I walked into the studio and um, Jamie DeGracia is there and uh, oh, Jamie. she um, she we had won Naha before and been nominated. Yeah. And also also a, gen a gentleman, I forget his last name, but his uh, first name is Pete. So Pete also was a winner of the Naha Award. And okay. I walk into this I walk into this studio and these these people are in there. So um they start to explain to me how we're doing a shoot for Naha. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, you guys won and I'm gonna shoot for Naha as well. So immediately like, I'm like, oh my God, like my heart's racing. I'm like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and these models, I literally met them the same day. Um, we picked them out the same, uh, the same day and these are the results that um, I got. I just had to take a deep breath and, you know, bite down and say, hey, you got this. Yeah. And this is what I created um, side by side watching um, Jamie DeGrassi and Pete um, both work. So yeah. we've had Jamie that's, on. That's yeah. the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, she was one of our early creative conversations way back like late spring early summer last year she's great and she's in chicago as well right yeah actually i was just with her uh this weekend um, okay monday actually <laughs> yeah well, so. send her our love so um yeah I, what i like about this collection is the um uh, the diversity and inclusion really ahead of that whole movement showing that these techniques work on all hair types. Um, and mm -hmm. I think having models that maybe aren't what some people would call traditional models, I think really came to life well in this. And again, great photography. Who's the photographer? Yeah. Uh, this was Jordan Holloway shot these. Oh yeah, what's that? One more time we can type it in. To uh, Jordan Holloway. Yeah. Jordan Holloway. Excellent, excellent work. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, because people always love the images. There you are. Congratulations and getting into the tribute journal. Looking good there. Um, but what I'd like to do yeah. is we have some shots of you in action. Um, tell me about this, because this was something maybe that didn't get nominated, but you shot it. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that you took yeah. a lot of risks here. Tell, tell us about this. So um, this was actually, um, we entered into the team category. Um, so a lot of things kind of spiraled from um, my nomination last year. Mm -hmm. And um, what actually what actually came about was like, um, we, we went 
forward and did an educational tour. Okay. So we ended up we ended up finding artists from all over the U.S. and we brought five artists together okay. and we created a team called the called the Disruptor team. Okay. And the Disruptor team goes out and we disrupt the industry and we teach um, we teach all these techniques and uh, great um, haircutting. That's what we do. And we actually brought all of us together and we did a team collection. So what you're seeing here is um, a few images from our team collection uh, that we, we entered this year with. So okay. um, these are actually two of the models that I worked on for that shoot. I'm, I'm loving the energy. It reminds me I'm much older than you, but I used to be into a band in the 80s called Adam and the Ants. Um, he became Adam Ant later, but Kings of the Wild Frontier, for those of you watching, has the most incredible drum lines, most incredible drumming you've ever heard in an album. He had like, I don't know, 10 drum sets on that track. Um, but yeah, I just, it's cool inspired 80s, but like um, definitely feels new and fresh at the same time. So congratulations on that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's and then, that's what we were shooting for. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I love it. Adam and the Ants yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, it was it was like um, rock rock band inspired. Um, you, we were calling it like a retro cyber funk. You know, I or like punk. It. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Now this one, I call because again, I was a kid of the eighties. I, it reminds me of Kid and Play and House Party. Like it gives me some of that energy, and I like that you're dan you're literally right. dancing through decades here. Tell me about this collection. <laughs> so um, this was also a, a creative collection that um, we shot with the Disruptor members as well. So okay. it's just it's just so it's so great working with these guys because everyone brings their own creativity. Um, in on these creative shoots and this was uh, inspired by the 80s um, so we wanted to go back in time uh -huh. <laughs> and this is uh, the result so you have the old school Nintendo um, and the haircuts you know we we were all inspired by that era um, the boom box you know sitting right. out on the ledge we act we actually um, traveled to New York, all of us, and uh, we shot all of these images there. Oh, no way. So these are on the streets or you you used a studio or? Um, so this is the inside of uh, one of the Disruptor uh, gentlemen's um, barber shops uh, called oh, no Fractal. Way. So, okay. so the, the inside of wooden wall um, with the Nintendo is inside of his, his barber shop. He actually has that set up in the waiting area. Oh, that's so, so cool. It looks, it looks really cool. Yeah. And then um, he just, we just set up a backdrop and we wanted to give it that like old um, school picture vibe with yeah. the background. <laughs> um, so that's how we shot that. And then in front, they're on the um, on the building next door to his barber shop on the on the stoop there. Yeah, it makes me think of when people use the word fly, right? Everything was fly. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got some Absolutely. more here. I like this is this is the same shoot. Yeah, this is the same shoot. So we were going for multiple uh, looks and um, you know, uh, we had a stylist there that um, owned like a store where they they had all this throwback stuff. So they had a throwback Bulls jersey. I'm like, we got to throw that on. That's my home team. Yeah. Um, so we, we went with that. And we, we found the basketball in the yard next door. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the key accessory to have for 2021 is a giant gold chain. So you nailed that. Um, now this is, this reminds me of uh, Day of the Dead, uh, but I, what I like about it is it's not, you know, you, you showed a really nice fade here um, and some work with color. Are you a colorist as well? 
Uh, actually, um, we had Lisa Fanuka, the director of education for Wall. She did all the color for this. Um, okay. And this was a, a, a whole collaborative effort um, on this one as well. We actually did a step-by-step -step tutorial on this. And then we brought in a, another makeup artist that um, Jamie DeGracia knows. Uh, they work together. Okay. Um, so we had her and then um, me and another barber, we kind of collaborated on this whole haircut here. I'm loving so it was, it was a, joint, a joint effort here on this one. I'm loving the skull at the back of the head too. That's really cool. And then I'm going to flip through more here. You've got some really cool stuff here. I like that you've got like some younger dudes and then you've got here again, a really beautiful fade into some more length toward the back. Is that, is that the Nieves version of a mullet? <laughs> um, well, that actually, that's funny you say that because, um, so after I made my first instructional video, that was back in 2009. Um, uh -huh. I actually did another one uh, afterward, volume two, and I had that shape in there. And this was back in 2010 um, when I released that. And I was calling it, um, I was calling it the bat hawk because I would make the back of the mohawk kind of look like a bat. Um, uh -huh. But with the tail there, it almost looks like Batman's logo at the bottom. Yeah, I and like then, it. And then all the fading is just around the ear. But um, this particular cut is actually um, something that we did because we're going to be doing um, in-person education um, moving forward now uh, with the Disruptor. So all of the Disruptor team got to create their own look that we will be teaching out on the road. So this ah. is uh, my look. <laughs> I love it. And tell me about, because there's some back to back here, black and white, and then I'm guessing that's your crew. We'll get to that at the end. But tell me about these black and whites here. What is this a part of? So this is um, the gentleman who shot this was Jordan Holloway. He's the one who shot my 2020 collection. And uh, he shot these as well, but these were all um, for curriculum development uh, for wall. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually did a lot of step-by-steps with these haircuts. Okay, very nice. And you have more here. And again, I'm just loving the diversity, the different hair textures. Um, it shows that you really have a good balance of understanding. Now, who is this? Is this, is this the, Disrupt tours. <laughs> yes. So yeah, you, you can see all our shirts say disrupt tour on it. So um, I, I guess from left to right, we can go. Uh, the guy with the blue hair, that's Bird Mena. He's our host. So okay. he just goes around and hosts. He's like the life of the party. Uh, okay. Real good energy to have around. The guy behind him is Z Ramsey, which is where we shot that retro shoot at his place. Um, and then the guy with the beanie, he's our videographer. So we take a videographer with us everywhere we go and he documents all of this stuff and we get really great footage. I like his name is movies. I've seen it. I've seen some of your stuff. <laughs> so his name is Gio. And then, um, Lisa Fanukin is the national director of education for wall. Um, uh, me and her, we, we work side by side on development of, curriculum with wall uh so much like so cool. <laughs> we're like always together and then um you have the blonde guy which is uh john carmona he's out of denver okay. and then next next to him the longer hair guy is uh trevor moots uh he's out of florida and then below there with the perm he was rocking the perm that day <laughs> <laughs> that that is kevin and uh he's out of san diego uh california okay. so we have all these guys we brought them all in <laughs> and that's the disruptor we're ready to disrupt the industry i love it well they're ready to disrupt and we are ready for any questions you might have out there so let us know as we wind down our show here just a couple things i want to ask you you've mentioned chicago a few times what is the Chicago look? What is the Chicago scene, if you could put it into a few words? 
the Chicago look and the Chicago scene is everything and anything. It is so diverse here, um, which is which is what made me a stronger barber, a stronger cosmetologist. Um, we just we just have everything here, and I mean, I can go down from the food. I can go get myself a good pizza. I can get good tacos. I could get good Chinese food, anything. It's the city is so big and diverse. It's um, just awesome living here. We have every season. So um, I could do a little bit less with winter, but we're moving into spring and, you know, over here, it could go from below zero to um, 60, 70 degrees overnight. So we, we take it as it comes. <laughs> And I read in one of your recent quotes that you called, you know, the situation the world has been in due to, you know, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. You took the high road and you called it your blessing in disguise. What did you mean by that? Um, well, a lot of opportunity came my way um, when all that happened. And I always go back to, you know, I was blessed to be um, in Cosmo school. I was blessed to be in barber school and learn what I, I learned along the way. And when all this hit, everyone was going virtual and I've been virtual for years. So um, it was, I just took it in stride. And, you know, um, as I developed more of a closer relationship with wall, that kind of set up a lot of opportunity for me. Um, which kind of led up to me becoming the lead educator for Wall Clipper uh, Corporation. And there's never been that title before, you know, so I'm, I'm very honored to have it. And along, the, along this also, I prepared and I'm opening up a barber school um, wow. here in Chicago. And that's gonna be called the How to Fade Hair Barber School. Um, I just had my final inspection last Thursday from the state. The state um, inspectors told me that they've done 16 inspections in Illinois and um, mine was the most cleanest and organized place that they have been in. So um, that was kind of like a, a great thing for me. And, you know, I, I just really feel I really feel blessed right now. And um, you know, the Naha uh, nomination as well. Um, just just being nominated is is just a true honor and it changes your career around, you know. So yeah. I'm 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 blessed. Um, so yeah, we're 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 gonna need your they're giving a shout out from PBA, they're gonna need your students um, in the Beacon program for sure. We got a question. What advice do you give a new barber just starting out? I would say um, patience. Soak up everything you can um, in school. Uh, definitely, you know, um, one thing that that is is in my mind right now as I'm developing my curriculum, I want to keep my students busy. So there should be no reason why no one is is just sitting around, you know, um, and you have to almost motivate your yourself in a way as a student, you know, to soak up um, the knowledge, you know, so look to your peers, look to the person next to you. Um, you could always learn something from someone. And that's like one of my models that I I live by. Mm. And um I would say that that's going to be some heavy advice for you. I like that. How are you staying creative right now? Um, you know, it sounds like you've got this new job with wall. You've got the, the uh, academy to keep you busy. Any other advice you could give on staying creative? And Christy, your wife says hello. And she's so proud of you. <laughs> and I have hello. your beer. <laughs> I'm drinking. We're, we're friends on, a, on another coast. <laughs> now she's going to ask me to pick up a six pack on my way home. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have the same buzz, girl. We'll have the same one. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've been finding creativity everywhere, but um, more so than not, I've been finding creativity um, 
with the people around me. And, and that's especially the Disruptor crew. Like some of their work is just so amazing. And, you know, um, it's great to have a group around you that you can just kind of even ask questions to, you know, um, yeah. there's, there's never um, a time where you stop learning in this business, you know? So right. um, I always look, I look to social media. I'm, I'm always watching videos and, and things like that for um, inspiration on creativity, pictures, everything like that, you know, on, on social. What about barbers who, um, I've interviewed on my, my own show, MSC TV, um, the, uh, David Peterson, who is the founder of Rudy's Barbershops and asked him. And when I got to a point of barber, 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 he said, we cut everybody's hair. And so what are your thoughts on someone doesn't want to give up the, the long layers and the, the longer hairdressing? Um, do you think they can live together well in a barber shop? Yeah, I think if um, if you're not trying to learn those type of techniques in this day and age, you're going to get left behind. Right. And you definitely should broaden your horizon and really try to um, add that service into what it is you do. Um, gender neutral um, pricing is a big thing um, these days. And yeah. I would highly recommend that. Um, we have one set price in my barber shop, and that's the way we work. Okay. So yeah, it's the blow dry <laughs> that you got to <laughs> add money for, right? Because <laughs> my barber shop, there, they're like, we don't care what your pronoun is. If you need a blow dry, that's extra. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think that's completely fair to, you know, look, you got to pay for what the stylist is doing. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or gender fluid. It's about the service that's provided. I agree with you 100%. I could pick your brain all day about, you know, what's next for the barber industry, for example. You know, it's really, people forget how new this craze is, right? Like if even 10 years ago, you're right. You were the only guy on YouTube doing stuff. And, uh, you know, now you've got the Dutch barbers, you've got the Italians, you've got the Mexican barbers. Like, it's really a big thing right now. Um, and so what, what do you think is next for the barber industry? Well, I, I, like I said, I can see, um, I can see that you definitely have to be versatile. Um, so me coming from a Cosmo background, and incorporating that into my barbering, that is helping me um, along with the trends that are coming out now because you you and I both know how it goes. There's either, you know, there's that big hair um, that was around back when, and yeah. then it's starting to come back. Everything oh, yeah. kind of cycles back through, but there's always a twist to it. So right. we're starting to see, just like you said yourself earlier, I want that real skin tight, Mm -hmm. I want to feel that in my in my mm -hmm. haircut. And even though you have a lot of volume and a lot of length on top, yeah. you have to be you have to be able to do it all. And yeah, I think that that's where we're going right now. Yeah. So they really they, you got to sharpen up all those skills. And folks, one of the ways to do that is to follow this guy. He knows his stuff. I've seen his stage presentations. Thank you. You were live. So those of you who missed it, he did a class uh, as a part of ISSE, which was a huge success for those of you just tuning in. Um, that was, uh, God, it seems like 100 years ago, but it was last weekend um, <laughs> or the weekend before. Sorry. Um, so um, we were so glad you're there. I like to ask um, a fun question at the end of this. Um, I'm trying to remember Jamie's answer. Um, it might come to me. I, you probably know it better than I do, but I like to ask a fun, silly question at the end of this. And that is if you were asked by Crayola Crayon to create a new sort of barbershop edition, um, uh, something pure Nieves, uh, your own crayon, what would that color be? And what would you name it? Oh, wow. 
So it'd be my crayon, huh? <laughs> yeah, your very own. It's going to go in a box. Kids are going to see it, so keep it clean. Well, although Chelsea Von James, she was right on the line. She called hers trailer trash, and she said the color would be <laughs> uh, like Mountain Dew meets Smoker's Teeth or something. It was hysterical. <laughs> 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 that's Chelsea. Well, <laughs> well, I'd, I'd have to stick with my brand. I'd probably have to call it how to fade hair. Although, Ooh. although I would think that it wouldn't really fade your hair, but it would be like, you remember them old um, multicolor pens? You just click yeah. everything around and you could change the color up. Would that be cool for a crayon? Kind of click yeah. into different colors. I like yeah. that idea. I love it. I love that. You with with fade, I also think it could be like a a pixel, right? Like it gives you some sort of dots as you do it up. So it starts with no dots and then gives you dots. Yeah. I'm liking like the way some cool, <laughs> some cool texture. Some cool texture to the crayon. Maybe a right? sharpener that that keeps that uh, texture going. That would be cool. You're like, let me make the sharpener, teach you how to fade. <laughs> Do you have any final words for our viewers watching at home, New Evis? Uh Yeah, actually, um, stay inspired, stay learning. Uh, like I said, you can always learn something for someone. I'd like to thank you, Michael, for um, you know doing this great interview. Uh, thank the PBA. Thank Naha. I will see you all in Vegas, and I'm looking forward to shaking your hand michael out in vegas <laughs> yes i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be there i promise you we had a lot of fun last time you know i was goofing around on stage we called it hosting but it was more like just all of us having fun um thank you so much for that and again see you at cosmoprof live show august 29th las vegas get your hotel rooms folks prices are starting to go up the more people start getting vaccinated and ready to go, the more stuff is booking up. Trust me, I just tried to book something. It's three times higher than it was a month ago. Get your tickets now. Book. Tickets go on sale this spring. If you guys have a date or a link yet, type it into the box or type it into Facebook. Um, again, thank you to everyone, including yourself, for the great work at ISSE. If you bought a ticket to ISSE, go back and watch stuff. My God. 80 different performances by incredible artists from all over the world, including we did a little something at Living Proof. We did a live photo shoot um, and we showed you what to do and what not to do live on camera. So thank you again, Nuevas, Nieves, Nuevas. You're suddenly <laughs> nine years old. Um, <laughs> so thank you again for this incredible interview. I will shake your hand in Las Vegas. Look forward to it and best of luck to you. I hope thank I you. Hope, <laughs> I hope you get it. Or I can't say that. I can't say that, but you're gonna do great. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs>